Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. Today we'll be going over some of the new features of the ICX35HWC Cellular Gateway when using version 1.4 or later. We have another video available that goes over how to log into the Gateway's built-in web page and perform the basic setup and configuration. If you've just received your ICX35 and need to go through the initial setup, we recommend that you watch that video first. Imagine a scenario where we have an ICX35 connected to a PLC at our factory site. The PLC program is controlling and monitoring assembly machines on the factory floor over Modbus TCP. For this video, we're using a Schneider Electric M340 PLC, and we'll use a derived function block to communicate with the cellular gateway and allow you to interact with your PLC program using SMS text messages. This means that you could, for example, receive an SMS text message alerting you of a raw material shortage, and then send an SMS text back to pause the machine until you can get more raw material. We'll also see how your PLC can access the ICX35 status data, such as signal strength and data usage, so that your operator could identify a potential cellular network problem. This diagram shows the IP address of my cellular gateway as well as the M340 PLC that I'll be using for this tutorial. Let's begin. I'll log into my ICX35's web page. The default IP and login are as follows. If your application requires any security at all, it's strongly recommended that you watch the video mentioned earlier and go through the process of changing them. Now, there is just one thing that we have to do here. We need to ensure that the Modbus TCP agent is enabled. You can see if it's enabled or not from the main status screen. If it's green, you're good to go. If it's not enabled, go to the Configuration tab and open up the Advanced Parameters by clicking Advanced over on the left here. And down at the bottom, expand Modbus TCP agent. Click on the status and set it to Enable and then click Apply. Now I can see, back on the status page, that Modbus TCP is enabled. Now that we've done that, we're ready to bring the ICX35 into our Unity Pro XL project and make use of the SMS texting features. I'll open up Unity Pro XL. I have a project already set up and running here on my M340-20 processor and I want to bring my ICX35 into the project so that I can send and receive text messages, as well as check the status data of the ICX35 from the PLC program. To do this, I'll need to import the supplied derived function block, or DFB, and then create an Ethernet path to get to our cellular modem. I'll begin by going to the Function view, right-clicking and choosing Import. I'll now browse for and select the DFB file to bring it into my project. The DFB is available under the Download tab on the ICX35 product page on the ProSoft Technology website. Once the DFB has finished importing, I'll go to the Project Settings, expand the General Settings, and under Variables, ensure that the box to Allow Dynamic Arrays is checked. This will allow us to edit the arrays for phone numbers and SMS messages. I'll rebuild the project to account for the changes I've made. Now is a good time to save your project. And if you are using an existing project, it might be a good idea to just give it a different name. We'll open up the animation tables where we can see the variables for the ICX35 that the DFB brought in and double click on ICX35 table, we have the five variables that comprise the functionality of the ICX35 in the program. Config, control, status, SMS read, and SMS write. Start by expanding ICX35 config, and there are two variables, network name and IP address. This should just be our network name under communication and the IP of the ICX35, which for me is 
I'll take a look at ICX35 control next. This variable is used to trigger all the commands to the gateway, such as get status and trigger SMS messages, clearing data, and rebooting the module. Further down, we have the ICX35 status data variable. Expand this and you'll see all the various status and configuration data for the ICX35 radio. All these variables will be populated once the get status trigger has been toggled by entering a one. As you can see, we have signal strength, the WAN IP address, bytes sent, and bytes received for both the LAN and the WAN. SMS messages sent and received, power on time, link up time, and data usage down here. So going back up to the message sent and received variables, the ICX35.status messages sent variable should increment by one each time an SMS text message is sent successfully. You can check for the number of received messages under the messages received variable. These message counters are how the application knows that the ICX35 has sent or received a new SMS message. Now, once you have a program up and running, you can actually build logic to monitor the messages received counter and when it detects a new SMS message to automatically trigger the get SMS command to retrieve the SMS message from the ICX35 automatically, just as an example. So next we'll go over to SMS text messages. Expand ICX35 SMS read and SMS write data. To send text messages to cellular phones or other devices, from this gateway, you use the SMS write data array. The SMS read data array contains the SMS text messages received by the gateway from cellular phones or other devices. When the control trigger to get SMS messages is toggled, you'll see the most current text messages in the ICX35's buffer populate the SMS read data under message. You'll also get the date and time the message was received by the ICX35 and the phone number that sent the message. Under write data, the message length shows the number of bytes allowable in the SMS message. It is bytes, by the way, and not characters. You can send and receive up to 80 at a time, and that's 160 characters, including spaces. The phone number count is the number of cellular phones or devices to receive SMS messages from the ICX35. You can enter up to five, and the phone numbers themselves are entered in here under phone number one through five. For your information, it's easiest to use ASCII formatting for data display throughout this section to see everything in plain alphanumerical form. Although the other formats can be handy if you're accustomed to working with them. To enter a number, start with the appropriate country code on the first line. For the US, it's plus one, then two digits at a time for the rest of the number. So that is how the SMS features work. Now, just to be clear, the ICX35 does not process the text messages when they're received or take any actions on its own. When an incoming SMS is received, the ICX35 will hold it in its own memory buffer until the get SMS messages variable is toggled in the PLC program, at which point the gateway will pass the message to the PLC. It will then be up to you to write the ladder logic to make your program interface with the SMS variables in the ICX35 DFB. Let's run through a quick example of how this could work. So I've just sent a text from my phone to the ICX35 here. And if we look under message received, we can see the counter go up. If we then trigger the get SMS command, the PLC will read the message from the ICX35 and we see the actual text message under SMS read data message. Now it's not easy to read in this format, but the program now has access to the message and you can program the PLC to execute commands based on these SMS texts. Looking under SMS write data, I'll set a message length of 70 bytes. We can then expand message and enter in a message that can be sent out as an SMS text to all the phone numbers in our list here. 
As with entering the phone numbers, you must enter the message one byte or two characters per line. Spaces do count, so you'll have to keep track of where you place them. Once the message is ready, I'll have to enter a one for phone count so that uh, it will send the message to the first and only number in the list. Then to trigger this SMS write, we'll go back up to ICX35 control and enter a one for send new SMS. The ICX35 will send the message that we just created out to all the phone numbers in the list. My number is in there, so after a few seconds, I do indeed get a text message from the ICX35. So with some logic, this could be an automated response to the command that I texted earlier. This is just a little sample of the sort of functionality that you can get using the ICX35 and its features. If you'd like more information, visit our website or feel free to give us a call. Until next time, happy training.